Hi, my name's Vince Sheehan, and uh, recently I visited the Royal Pavilion in Brighton. Uh, here's the guidebook. And um, my goodness me, what an amazing house this is. I visited it about 20 years ago, but um, going back there was just awesome. Just loved it. So I, I, during this video, I'd just like to talk about um, really what it, what the pavilion is there for and a few of the highlights. And at the end of the video, I've got a slideshow with some images illustrating the exterior and uh, each of the rooms. Now, George IV, here he is here. He's the guy who uh, is responsible for the Royal Pavilion. In 1786, he uh, wanted to get away from uh, London and from, um, I think, his father at the time, George III. And he wanted to just enjoy himself, basically, in Brighton, enjoy the, um, the entertainments, the, the drinking, the feasting and the women. And, uh, and he hired a farmhouse originally, which then became a kind of neoclassical mansion. But then with the genius of John Nash became the Indian fantasy, which it is today. I mean, check out the photos later on in the video, but here's a, you know, just a glimpse of what it looks like. Full of minarets and domes, a bit like the Taj Mahal, I suppose. And the interior is just like, rather than being Indian, is Chinese, just like a, chi a Chinese dream. Um, none of it's authentic, it's all kind of uh, someone who's entranced by the East and um, wants to bring something of the Oriental theatricality into his pleasure palace, if you like. The Royal Pavilion is just one of those buildings which, if you're familiar with English stately homes they're all worth visiting but they can be a bit samey quite often have your neoclassical uh, architecture your columns etc etc very beautiful but very balanced and uh, and sober in a way but with the Royal Pavilion it's just one of those places which just bowls you over because it's just so over the top so extravagant some might say in poor taste, but my goodness me, it's just a delight just to walk through these rooms. I mean, even looking at it from the outside is amazing. But when you go in, I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. You walk through initially uh, this place called the entrance hall, which is all kind of this pale green. That's what it looks like here. Very understated by the, um, the standards of the rest of the place, but very beautiful. And just a quick word on the interior designers, the decorators. Um, most of it was done by this guy called Robert Jones, um, but, but also a lot of it was done by um, John and Frederick Crace. Um, and it's just, just of the highest standards all the way through. It's just absolutely amazing. Uh, no expense spared. After the entrance hall, you come to the long gallery, which is just just incredible. This doesn't give it justice at all really. As the name suggests, it's just this very long room um, filled with chinoiserie, this kind of uh, Chinese inspired applied art which was um, very popular in the 18th century. And um, but it's just done on such a huge and overwhelming scale. Uh, there's just uh, lotus leaves, bamboo everywhere. You think the furniture's bamboo, but it's just painted to look like bamboo. Uh, it's full of illusion, the, uh, the Royal Pavilion. Apparently they used to have mirrored doors either end to make it look even longer than it is. And you have these nodding Chinese servants all the way along, which are utterly delightful. Um, wonderful glass, chandeliers, but the best is yet to come. We come to the banqueting room, and the banqueting room is just out of this world. Again, the pictures, you'd have to come here to see it really, but uh, the pictures don't really do it justice. But my goodness me, this room is just a complete knockout. Again, dragons everywhere, an amazing ceiling. 
a chandelier with plantain leaves um, above in the ceiling, some of them three-dimensional coming out. I mean, again, full of illusion, um, full of gold, silver gilt. It really is a sight to behold. You then go into the kitchen, which usually in stately homes, I find the kitchen's the most boring part of the tour because they're the same everywhere. Um, but this kitchen's different. It's got an incredibly high ceiling with a skylight and these um, these big columns, which are disguised look like palm trees. Um, it's just incredible. It, it really is a great place, you know, a great space rather. Um, absolutely massive and unusually very near the banqueting room usually in a, in a home it would have been further away from where the, the guests dined there's then um, a banqueting room gallery which takes us to another absolutely amazing uh, space the saloon the saloon is this massive um, kind of domed room with a beautiful carpet with a sunflower on it. In fact, there's sunflowers all over this room when you look at it in the decoration with these two apses. And again, there's dragons everywhere, red and gold everywhere. It's just absolutely stunning. The ceiling's like the sky. And of course, the furniture throughout is just first rate as well and incredibly beautiful. We then have another gallery which leads us to the music room, which again <laughs> just takes your breath away. I haven't really got a decent picture of the whole thing, but here's a detail here of uh, I think the fireplace. Um, again, filled with these amazing chandeliers. The ceiling is absolutely incredible, um, with all these kind of scallop shell detailing details. You know, hundreds of dragons everywhere, Chinese dragons, some that look like snakes. An ornate organ. This room has suffered a great deal from um, a fire first and then um, apparently an ornament from the exterior fell through the ceiling not so long ago. So this has been restored in a mightily impressive way. We then come into the King's Apartments, uh, this kind of green wallpaper and, and the bed where King George IV died. Um, he cuts a rather sad figure at the end of his life, uh, very, very unpopular due to his extravagance and profligacy and um, Apparently he was so fat he didn't want anyone to, to see him so he created a tunnel from his apartments to the, uh, the stables which is now the Brighton Museum. There's a library here as well. Um, then there's this tiny room called the Yellow Ante Room where you see this portrait of George IV which is uh, very well known um, by Sir Thomas Lawrence but this isn't the original, this is a mosaic um, reproduction and it's it's really fantastic you know you, you go and look at it and you see all these tiny tesserae you know these tiny um, elements in this portrait but it's absolutely incredible then we go up to the first floor it's a very famous painting by Rex Whistler of George IV kind of about to ravage Brighton personified as this woman and there's these satirical prints uh, on display really roasting George IV. Uh, there's a corridor, the Adelaide corridor, uh, with this exquisite Chinese wallpaper which is very dark but it's well worth just having a close look at that. There's the yellow bow rooms where William IV stayed and I think he, the Duke of York and then Queen Victoria's apartments as well. With this, again, this beautiful wallpaper with these birds. Before we come to the South Gallery with this, uh, this, uh, this vibrant blue on the walls. And then the gardens, um, 
outside, rather small, but um, you know, charming. The pavilion was also used as a, a military hospital during the First World War for Indian soldiers. Um, there's a little exhibition there about that as well. That's rather interesting. And um, yeah, I mean, it's a picture of the, the building from the west with the, in the gardens. So yeah, the Royal Pavilion, an absolute must if you're in, um, if you're on a day out uh, in the south of England, maybe you want to head out of London if you're staying there for a day trip. The Royal Pavilion is, I think, one of the best stately homes I've visited and uh, I've visited a lot. Uh, so if you haven't been there, check it out. You won't regret it. And uh, thank you for watching. There's just a brief slideshow of uh, a bit of the history and pictures of the exterior and interior. Okay, thanks. Bye.